What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode. This episode um, doesn't have as much to do with Blackwater as the other ones have in the past, or just stuff like that in general. This episode is probably uh, more closely related to our other company. I'm sure you guys saw me post the past couple days about this new deal Drew and I have been working on. So to start... Um, you know, our other little company is called TechNet. Why is it called TechNet? Um, pretty easy, pretty dumb, all at the same time. Drew is one of the best technology guys that you or I have ever met. And I, myself, am just a random redneck that likes computers. So mix those together and you have TechNet. Cheesy name, but it's short and... Uh, easy to understand once you get the idea behind it. What are we doing with TechNec or what is TechNec is probably the more important question. And to uh, start that off, um, a few years back, Drew and I got together. We've It's a long time Drew and I have been working on different stuff for uh, the outdoor industry, bringing his knowledge of technology or his infinite knowledge of technology and what little knowledge I have and merging those together to do stuff in the outdoor industry, um, you know, that's made us a few dollars here and there. Um, with this one, though, it, it became a little different because I obviously own um, an outfitting business called Blackwater that Blackwater in itself is not super old, but while we were uh, a few years back, while we were working on some different stuff with Technic, we decided, you know, why don't why do we not why do we not try this in the outfitting world and see what happens there? And so we did. That's when we built the the Blackwater site that you see today, um, and uh, put our model into place. We wanted to take the model that we had run in other industries, um, as you know, Drew had done it in the outside world and, and then we started doing it with different little products and stuff in the, in the industry, in the outdoor industry world. And, um, it worked. And so we said, you know what, well, let's try to do this with, um, an outfitting business, which I happened to have had. <clears throat> and so we tried it and, um, needless to say it worked and it worked extremely well in a very short time. Um, and if you do a little bit of research and into some of the stuff that we focused on, such as Googling a term like Texas axis hunts, um, you will probably find Blackwater somewhere at the top. And we did it with a few different species and a few different terms, but axis was always my, uh, my biggest thing. Uh, to hunt, and so we really focused on some Axis stuff, just to see, you know, what are the guys at the top of Google getting compared to, if you're not up there, you know, kind of a marketing stance as far as how much more business do the guys at the top get than the guys that don't show up at the top, and so we saw that, and it did not take us long with our model to to reach um, that that placement up there near the top or at the top, and uh, we saw a drastic change in business. And when that started happening, we started receiving all these inquiries. And then we decided, what do you do with all these inquiries? And so, um, because it's easy to, to lose them, and you guys know as well as I know, <clears throat> that in this business, there are s the, the, the pot is so thick with people trying to reach out, find anybody, <coughs> excuse me, that wants to hunt, that that if the word is put out that here's John and he's looking for an access hunt, he's going to get bombarded. So if you cannot close him when he contacts you, um, then it's, it's not even a matter of days. It's a matter of hours before you lose him to somebody else. And so we built this entire model um, inside of Blackwater to see what it would do if we did things organized and um, correctly just like a large business would do and and how would that work in the outfitting industry and I can tell you sitting right here today um, that it works amazing absolutely amazing and if you would have told me 
you know, three, four, five years ago that this is the type of business that we would be able to build, um, I would have thought, no, it'll take 15 years to build up that type of clientele or it will, you know, it's just, it's not possible with the amount of diversity in our industry and how many people there are to choose from and blah, blah, blah. It's just, there's no way to do that. And I was wrong. There is a way to do that. And that's, and that's the model that we've built. And so, um, I'm definitely not saying this to brag or to try to sales pitch you or give you the used car salesman theory or anything like that. What I'm trying to do is say that once we got to that point, we realized, okay, we have to reach out and expand <clears throat> and we have to expand on a vast scale from property to employees to, you know, the whole nine yards. And what it turns out or what we found was, okay, one, that's extremely tough to do because anybody that's listening to this that is a, a hunting outfitter or is a fishing guide um, that owns their own business understands that it's very difficult to find other people that want to work in the outfitting industry that don't have A, a record, or B, their own ideas of how things should be done, or C, can actually show up on time and do the job daily without causing any problems in your business, which is usually directly related to your name. Um, and so that's the last thing you want to do is give yourself a bad name because somebody else that you hired and tried to get to help with your company has you know, cause you problems. And so then we switch to this ideology of, you know what, well, maybe we can franchise out <coughs> and franchise Blackwater. I promise I don't have Corona and franchise black and, um, and do that. And so then my idea was, okay, we'll get these guys that, that are wanting to um, that have their own property or wanting to start something up and want to be a part of the Blackwater name and do this. And then we can grow it through them with, you know, just like a franchise would do if you had a Chick-fil-A or a McDonald's or KFC or whatever it is. And so that was our, our theory on that. And, um, that turned south fast because understandably when a guy wants to become an outfitter or become a you know, a fishing guide or whatever it is. Um, like I said, they have their own ideas. They want to do things their way. They, they don't want to ride for your brand. They want, and what it boils down to, and we joke about a lot is, is that guys don't want to wear your logo. They want to, they want to sit down in their house and, and come up with their own company name or logo or whatever it is. And that's the one they want to do. And they want to say it's theirs. And they don't want to say that they work for or with you. They, they want to, say they did it by themselves, which is great. I wanted to do that too. And I did. And so the, I, I understand that and I have no qualms with that at all, but it does shut down the theory of being able to do a franchise through <clears throat> this model we built because it's just, it's so time consuming to try to find the right people. And, and if you were to find a right, the right person, how long does that last before they go, you know what? I'm, I just need to move on and do this by myself. And then you have all this training time and all this money and effort you put into it only to watch them walk away and do something else. And I'm not talking about client stealing or anything like that. That's beside the point. It's just that you put a bunch of time and effort into something and it always has an expiration date. And in our business, the expiration date seems to be pretty short. Um, and so you're not getting out of it what you put into it. And so the franchise model just, it went away in a hurry. And so we sat on it for another year talking about doing different stuff. And, um, in that time we started Megalo and, and doing that and, uh, have enjoyed doing a, a product space, but we keep returning back to this theory of how do we get this model out there to people? And it's tough in this business because I've been told multiple times, um, I won't say multiple times, but I have been told, you know, by, certain people like, oh, how, how much outfitters in our business hate my guts and I'm just an arrogant jackass and this, that, and the other. And <clears throat> the truth of the matter is I'm, I'm not anybody that's ever said that has usually never even shook hands and met me. And, um, the people that, um, 
I am friends with and really know me know that I would do anything in the world to to help a guy out and that I have no interest at all in putting somebody down or trying to steal business or anything even directly related to that. Our model works and therefore I have plenty of business and I, I want to see people succeed in this and I do believe in capitalism and so I like competition and the diversity in the market and being able to have options for, for clients to use. Um, and so anybody that would say that kind of stuff about, you know, us or our company is, <clears throat> they're just saying that to say it, um, because a lot of times that's what people do. But, um, once they've actually met me, they'll know that I, I would give them everything that I have to spare just to, just to see somebody succeed. And so, um, the model that we've built, um, has proven itself and, and therefore we've decided let's take Technic and let's share this model with others. Obviously I did say I was a capitalist, so obviously not for free. Um, we definitely will be charging for the service, but at the same time, it's, it's something that guys can use as an investment tool on their own to try to separate themselves from the pack of, of just it, it, of hyenas really is what it reminds me of on the Lion King. You know what I mean? You throw in a bone and it's just a swarm. And so it's tough to separate yourself. And a lot of times guys that you'll see on on Facebook and stuff like that, you get in these bidding wars, and a lot of times the separation ends up being just a down drive of the price in the market um, to where it's not even worth doing the hunt. By the time 17 to 25 outfitters have started at price X and have worked their way down all the way to the point that there's not even enough profit on the on the hunt to run it, um, you know, that's usually what you end up seeing getting left on the Facebook bidding wars. And it's really, you know, it's it's really not good for, for anybody. It's not good for the industry because you've got two sides of the industry, which, in, and I'm talking in the hunting world, in the fishing world, I guess it's, it's not good either because you drive the price down to where you're barely paying your fuel to run a trip. But in the hunting world, you've, especially in the exotic market, you've got these um, you know, two separate sides. You've got the, the breeding and the animal purchases and all that kind of stuff. And then you've got the actual hunting side and, and we've watched the, the live cell side of animals just every single year. It just climbs higher and higher and higher. And it's, and it even appears that it doesn't even look like a downturn in the economy could stop the climb of, of these live cells, which, um, a lot of that has to do with some some wealthy individuals that can put a perceived value on the market and they continue to drive it up but the flip side of that is is that in the in the hunting portion of that um your clients you know they can only go so high on certain animals and then you end up getting watching these bidding wars happen and and you know for a fact that the replacement value of animal x is is equal to or more than what some people are selling the actual hunt for and therefore it just puts a I mean it, it puts a mega kink in the hose of the industry trying to keep up and, and make those two items match and so that's where it gets tough on the on the bidding word side which is what you what is the most common um use of of trying to obtain clients is watching that happen on social media where there's one client that wants a hunt and there's 40 outfitters that are just cutting each other's throats and cutting their own throats really uh to try to win that to win that client over and i believe our model helps that because what we've noticed is that when you're ranking um higher on a google uh, type level, and I'm not talking about our model just being an SEO type model, but when you're ranking up there and you have the organization and the structure to provide a great service to your client, you're not bidding on clients. 
Um, you know, you're sitting there looking at clients that are writing into you going, I want to hunt with you. They know what your price is. They're, they're perfectly fine with your price or they wouldn't have wrote in to begin with. And all you're doing is closing the cell and organizing the, the or facilitating the, um, basically the transition into coming to the ranch and then running the hunt and then everybody going home. And so it's, it's less of a, how do I get a client and more of a, here's my clients. How do I provide for them? And so that's kind of what we're doing in, in Technic and, and to, to be blunt about it, you know, it's three stages. And so we will, or I say stages, it's three uh, series of services, kind of like anything else you would see on a three tier thing like that, you know, where you have like a, um, a bronze, silver, gold type packages that, that you can use or invest in. And when I say invest in, um, I don't want people thinking it's some huge investment. I'm talking about, you know, this would cost you less than your cell phone bill. Um, and so it's just a, it's a service. And that was kind of my deal was that when I started out, um, trying to figure out, okay, how do you obtain clients without getting into the mosh pit of Facebook and fighting people for them? Um, how do you do that? Well, currently you'll see that there's a ton of companies that are bending over backwards, willing to, to help you do that. And <clears throat> there's usually three, three stages of those companies or levels of those companies that are types of those companies that, um, that they try to steer you towards one being Google AdWords, which at the heyday or the beginning of Google AdWords, it was an awesome source to use. Um, as time and technology grew, Google AdWords is a source that I would personally stay completely away from because it's too easy to be manipulated um, by, you know, your peers, your competitors, bots, uh, whatever. You can end up spending, I mean, just the <clears throat> just the amount of money that it costs to play in that game. Uh, you start searching something about hunting in Texas on Google right now and look at you know, the Google AdWords sections, which is the top of all of it, where it says ad or sponsored. And um, you'll see, you know, Ox Ranch will be at the top of all of them, which more power to, to Brent Oxley and that company. But um, I can tell you right now that you're the average guys no, not even close to being able to compete with the amount of money that a company like Ox Ranch is going to put into AdWords, meaning that your your ads are going to get ran through so fast you're never going to receive the benefit out of that and they're going to remain up there at the top for that and so when it comes to um stuff like adwords it it directly falls to the golden rule the man with the most goals wins and so if that's not you then you should know that going into it and and steer away from throwing bad money after good you know i mean it's just it's just or good money after bad however you want to look at it it's just constantly you putting in more money and receiving nothing in return um <clears throat> second thing is there's a lot of companies that that will call you and they can they can get your seo to the top you know you'll see you get ads from them constantly i'm sure you do i do and i'm sure the rest of you do but they can get you to the top and um <laughs> some of them will give you some some really crazy numbers like they can get you to the top in x amount of weeks or whatever it is and depending on what keywords or search terms they're telling you they can get you to the top at most of them i know from experience um most of them are either false in their um statement of what they can get you to the top in if they're telling you it's some great keyword um or they can get you to the top in a in an unrelative search term. See, so it's pretty easy to look at. We do <coughs> site reviews all the time, and it's pretty easy to look at key, these keyword search terms. And um, you know, as far as let's take access hunting for example, when we decided we wanted to capture Texas access hunts as our big one, we looked and thought, 
wow, that is a very competitive keyword. It's going to take us a little bit of time. Um, but if we'll do this, this, and this, we can do it right. We will, we will get there. It actually didn't take us as long as we thought uh, it was going to take us. It took us about almost a year uh, to capture the number one spot for Texas Axis Hunts. Um, but we built it in a manner that it is our, our quality of content and everything is, is high enough that, um, you know, we've been able to remain there for the past two years. Um, in the, you know, it, it differentiates month to month as Google changes and re, uh, reviews everybody's website, but we've yet to, uh, fall below number three on the front page of Google for that. And the majority of the time we're at the number one spot. Um, <clears throat> now if I was a company coming in and looking at that and I was going to try to sell you on it, you know, I could probably tell you, yeah, we can, we can get you up there at the top for access. You know, this is if I'm one of those third party companies, I could come in there and tell you that. And then I could go and search those search terms and I can look and see that something on there, like whatever spotted cheetah deer, um, hunts had tiny, you know, competition and I could make it to where your page ranked number one in a couple of weeks for spotted cheetah deer hunts or something like that, which is, it's just unrelative to you. You know, it doesn't mean anything. Yeah. You can say you're number one for that, but your inquiries on that is nothing. You know, what are people searching? People aren't searching that spotted deer hunt, um, to try to find an access hunt. They're searching access hunts in your area, Texas access hunts or wherever, you know, Florida access hunts, whatever it is. Um, and so that's, that's one way that they get you. Um, and uh, granted you do have to be, um, realistic with your expectations. If, if, you know, if you say that I want just anybody that just searches the word access I want to be number one on that. Well, okay, that's fine. It's going to take forever. And also, nobody is going out to search an access hunt and types in access and hits enter. That's that's not how that works. Um, and so you do have to be realistic, but that's kind of what we do um, in our model is, is figure out what are people that are looking for a hunt in your area searching and how do we capitalize on that phrase. Um, the third way that, that a lot of people get got uh, in our business is, um, and I don't want to say, I don't, <coughs> I don't want to say get got, <coughs> um, just another way that, that people try to market or advertise is through brokers. And there's nothing wrong with a good broker, a good broker. Um, um, in my opinion, a good broker is a huge asset to our industry. A bad broker is one of the worst things you can have in our industry. But even then, you know, as a broker, um, I haven't checked lately, but a few years ago I did, and I know that it's anywhere from 10 to 20% on whatever your gross hunt sale is, is what they're wanting to close a deal. And also, most brokers, um, especially if they are good brokers, have multiple um, outfits that they're working for, and so you're in there with a group of whatever, 20, 30 other guys, and all the inquiries are coming through the one broker and that guy is just matching up with the best fit. So if you're not the best fit, or I guess I shouldn't even say that if your bottom line is, is that you're in a pool with a bunch of other people and you're just hoping that whatever inquiry comes in for that day is, you know, fits your outfit better than it fits the other 19 that, that he is selling for because, you know, in the long run, it doesn't really, and it's nothing against the broker. It just doesn't really matter to him. His job is to sell the hunt to one of his, you know, customers, and therefore whichever one that lines up with best and he can get the sell for is um, is what he or she is, is going to do. Um, and then you also have things like your trade shows, which nowadays have got outrageous. You know, by the time you set up a booth at Texas Trophy Hunters, and get your rooms to stay there <laughs> and and get your actual stuff to put in your booth your material your, you know the the whatever the scenery that you're putting up behind you your travel i mean you're three grand into that for one weekend and there's you know most guys that do these trade shows they if that's their sole source of marketing they're having to do a lot more than just one trade show 
uh, to make it worth it because trade shows are very geographically specific. Um, and so, you know, if you're only in one area or whatever, that's, that's great. Um, and, and there's, there's a lot of benefit to being geographically specific, um, when you're marketing online, because, uh, people from all over can search the one <coughs> location. If your marketing is only done geographically specific, then only people that are in that location um, can see you. So if you want to branch out, you have to go spend another, you know, one to three thousand dollars over and over and over again to the tune of I know guys personally that are spending seventy five to eighty thousand dollars a year going to these trade shows and, and doing these trade shows. And for some of those guys it, it works and they're able to get their money back plus some. Um, but but there's a lot more cost effective way to do that if you do it right, and that's what's built into this model. Um, and so on the three tiers um, of service that, that we'll be providing through Technic, you know, we have those three tiers because each outfitter is different, right? And a lot of guys have it figured out um, to where they are very good at, at certain things and they may be not so good at other things. And, and so there's a whole, you know, each outfitter has, is at a different level in his life or her life or career um, as far as their business goes. And so some people may need everything and some people may just need a little bit, uh, to help them out. And so that's kind of what we've, we've tried to put together, um, to where we have, you know, a certain tier, which is just us coming in and, and sitting down and doing a review with you and going, okay, this is your best seller. This is where your, your attention needs to be focused. Let's build, you know, um, <coughs> uh, uh, uh a little site that's super optimized for that one thing. And let's, let's get these leads coming into you and you do with them, um, as you please. And then we have another tier, which is a little bit, uh, more than that. Um, as far as the building goes and the optimization and, and how the, the leads are done and how people can keep up with you through social media and tying all that together. Um, and, and then also a filtration system. So instead of every lead, coming to you because anybody that's an outfitter that's listening to this or a guide that's listening to this right now, you know that there's a lot of leads that come in that you look at it and go, A, I don't want to deal with this guy, or B, you know, this is a tire kicker, 100%. Um, just by the questions that they ask, and our lead, our lead generation system is very, um, it's very in-depth. And so I can read a lead and tell you, this, this guy's ready to go, or this guy is just throwing stuff against the wall, hoping something sticks somewhere. You know, I might be the 30th person that he's wrote today. Whereas some of them, I look at it and go, <clears throat> all we got to do is call this guy and, and take the deposit and schedule the hunt. Um, and so on that tier two, uh, we have, we have a, a system where it's, it's filtrating those through so that when John's outfitter business is, is getting the lead, this guy's ready to rock and roll. You know, it's not going to be a waste of time for him to contact this person. And then um, we know that there are certain outfits um, that are busy, have room to grow, but are busy. And one of the main keys in being a good outfitter is, are you providing that customer service to your client? And I can tell you right now that um, I've made this a, a, a personal mission of mine a long time ago, is that while I'm on a hunt with clients... Um, you know, I don't, I don't get on the phone with other clients um, because if I, <laughs> if I go on a hunting or fishing trip somewhere, the last thing I want to do, I've only got three days to be there. I want my guides or my outfitters' attention while I'm there. The last thing I want to do is ride around in a truck with them, or sit in a blind with them and watch them text other clients or listening to them talk to other clients about, you know, what all he can do for them. And but when I'm sitting right here, you know what I mean? And so that, that makes an awkward situation. Now, if you're, if you're all by yourself running a one man show or just you and one other guy, it's, it's tough to not do that because you're, you're missing opportunities to make sales and you have to make sales to keep your business going. And so that's kind of our, our third tier deal is to where we, we run the entire model for you, where we set it up um, just like we have it in Blackwater, where you have a 
um, basically a personal secretary that is provided by Technic, and that individual will be taking, um, you know, contacting all of the um, all of the inquiries and getting um, all their information, scheduling the hunts, taking the deposits, setting everything up to where you don't have to touch a phone uh, if you don't want to. Uh, granted, there's times where a client may have some super specific question that has to be answered by you because you know your business better than everybody else. And, and that question will be relayed to you. And when you get time to answer it, you can answer it outside of dealing with your current clients. And then your personal uh, assistant can can solve that problem with them and get everything set up and, and let it rock and roll. And I'll tell you this, because I know what a lot of you are thinking, because I had the same thought <clears throat> before we put this in, is that <laughs> nobody, I'm not going to be able to get an assistant that can, um, they can answer the questions properly. I thought that, and um, I was wrong. All it takes is for you or me as an outfitter to sit down with these per these people and and write out all the questions. You know what questions you get. I know what questions I got, and I wrote every single one of them down, and I wrote all my answers to all those questions, and I built a really good relationship with our um, office manager, and now it's to the point where I don't, I mean, we have two people working in there now, and and I don't have to answer a question unless it comes up as a scheduling issue or a rescheduling issue or whatever it is. If it's a question about the ranch or or the hunt or expectations or what size or any of that stuff, they've got it and they've got the answers and they can speak to these people and the people feel extremely comfortable. And when I when I get the clients to me or to our guide or whatever it is, um we know it all. And so there's not a question of this was told to them by this person just trying to sell the hunt and make their extra money. No, this person is working with me. And so therefore it was all done uh, in alignment with our company goals and, and organization. And therefore everything's on the same page. And so it makes, it makes life so much easier. And I'm talking the, the stuff in this model is in depth. So if, if James shows up, when you get on the calendar before he shows up, um, you know that James has a peanut allergy or, you know, whatever it is. He can't, he can't walk more than, more than 300 yards at a time. And, and so everything is set up so that you can be more successful for your client and make that experience more personalized. Um, and it works fantastic. They, they really enjoy the service that you're able to provide. And you see stuff happening like word of mouth uh, increasing greatly. Repeat business. Um, I think last year Blackwater was 87% return clients and, and we had 612 clients. Um, and so that is, and that was all grown um, in the past three years from running this model. And, and people just continue to come back. Your corporate hunts. They blossom because you have an organizational structure. Um, if you're in this third tier, you have an organizational structure that corporations and business owners are used to because there's no guessing. And they can send their secretary to, to set this up with you and your personal assistant or, or secretary or office manager that is provided by Technic can, <clears throat> can go with them. And it makes a seamless experience that all this is lined out just like they're regular day-to-day -day jobs are and all they have to do is show up and hunt and bring the check and it's all done and so there's no there's no back and forth with a guy that's trying to make decisions in his everyday business and now he's having to deal with stuff with you and these different questions no it's all done and he shows up and it's organized and it's stuff that they're used to <clears throat> and it all plays out and he comes back and and the people that are in that group that he's bringing they a lot of times they're running uh, businesses of their own. And, and, and next thing you know, everything was so organized and streamlined when they came with this guy that they decide they're going to bring their company next year also. And it just, it just keeps, you know, it's, it's like the old 
snowball rolling downhill effect. It just keeps growing and growing. And your organization structure never has to change because once you get this set in place, everything just runs like a well-oiled machine. Um, and so that's kind of what we have, what we're striving to, to provide is this service. Now it's not, <clears throat> like I said, it's technic. It has, it doesn't have the Blackwater name attached to it. Um, it doesn't have, you know, me in your ear telling you how to run your company. That's not what this is about. This is about us seeing this model work um, with somebody like me that that had tried everything that I knew how to try other than this structure and us blending good technology and good corporate organizational skills into an outfitting business and watching how it grew. And, um, and I can tell you from personal experience, it works. I mean, I'm doing stuff now and have the money to do stuff now in my life that I did not expect to have the ability to do as somebody that was just, I, I'm passionate about hunting. I wanted to guide hunts. That's all I've ever wanted to do. And so that's what I was passionate about. And it wasn't for me a deal of how much money can I make doing this? It was, can I make enough to get by and always do this? And so that was what it was about. Now, now that we've implemented this model and are running this organization and have the structure set up now i'm like holy smokes like there's a ton of money to be made in this industry and if done right you can have everything you want it is a good career choice it's not just a get by until you get a real job it is a real job and you can turn it into an extremely successful business and um and so there's a lot of help that comes in that and if you are in our like I said, if you're one of the guys or, or gals that want to be in that third tier program, when I'm talking about third tier, um, <clears throat> you know, like right now, the way we have it structured is the most expensive tier. Um, the first two tiers are just monthly fees, like $150 a month or $250 a month for tier two. Tier three that has everything set up for you, just like our business is currently set up and it's rocking and rolling and, and you're just running hunts and don't have to really lift a finger other than that first month to get everything set up. Um, I'm talking, it's like $250 a month for us to maintain all of the SEO and, and all the inquiries and everything like that. And 5% commission, um, that goes to your, your office assistant. That's how they're getting paid <clears throat> is the 5% commission for closing the, closing the, the, lead on the inquiry, closing the sale, scheduling the hunt, getting the info packets out, the whole nine yards. And so even on a list like that, you're, you know, you're spending less running through this model, which is, is actually doing something for you and personally for you, because in your geographic area, you're the only person that your office assistant is working for. And so they are dedicated to your company. And in that model, you're looking at $250 a month plus 5% commission for them to close your sales and, and run the, um, you know, the whatever you want to call it, clerical side um, of your business. And that um, in our industry is, is an amazing price point. And that's kind of what I was getting to is that I'm not I'm not trying to go out here and make all the franchise money like I originally thought off this plan. I'm looking at it more from an aspect of how do we build a better hunting community? How do we build um, and help outfitters and guides in our industry to be able to streamline this to where we are um, a more professional, organized industry across the board to where these clients aren't saying, no, don't go to Texas because it's just the Wild West and, and nobody knows what they're doing and it's all just, you know, you're going to get screwed over. No, everything is set up to be run correctly. And and in that third tier, you know, we we can help with everything. Um, if you have you have an open line for questions about stuff we've we've done and tried that's worked and hasn't worked, um, we're willing to help with, with these third-party companies that we use that provide our our outfitters insurance um, to get, you know, get guys set up with that. We're willing to help with <clears throat> these third-party companies that we use um, financially to be able to set yourself up for success in the future where you're, there, there is no 401k in outfitting. There is no retirement fund in outfitting, but there can be if you 
use this model correctly and are organized, we have a third party company that, that we work with that costs you nothing and we make nothing off of it. We're just excited to share it with you um, to where you can put a little bit back into this investment fund and watch it grow over time to where when you are 65 years old and just tired of walking up and down hills and cleaning animals, you've got a nest egg sitting there that you can go and do something with and you don't have to work until you're 80 and, and 90 and the day you die. You know what I mean? You can kick back and, and take a little rest. Um, and so that's kind of the, the service that we're looking to provide. We're very excited to provide that service to you guys. Um, anybody that wants it. If you don't want it, you still think that, <clears throat> you know, I'm an arrogant jerk and, and you don't want anything to do with me, that's fine. Just know that it's not just me in this. There, <laughs> You don't have to speak to me if you don't want to. Um, this is a completely separate company from Blackwater and it's totally designed to help you as an outfitter or a fishing guide become more successful. Streamline your business in a manner that your clients appreciate the organization and feel comfortable doing business with you keep you out of the rat race of trying to fight over clients on social media and ultimately allow you the opportunity to do what you do best which is run your trips and and manage your business and have somebody else taking care of all the work because we know it's work answering emails doing phone calls trying to find times on the schedule answering the questions when a guy calls you you guarantee in this business when a guy calls you it's 30 minutes on the phone because they want to tell you about the <clears throat> the 200 inch deer that they missed with their bow last year or the black panther that ran out in front of them and their cousin while they were driving on the back roads in east texas last year or whatever it is and every 30 minutes that you take on that phone takes away from either your clients or what you could be doing to better improve your business as it is and that's what this model is designed to do is to take that work off your plate for a minimal fee and help you watch your business grow into what you want it to become so if you are interested uh feel free to to hit us up um you know you can you can find us online um my my email is bwgsinfo at gmail.com that's my personal email you can shoot that to me and i i get all those emails um or you can find me on social media and shoot me a message or you can leave a comment right here below this video and uh and i'll definitely get back with you but just keep in mind that that that's what this is about um and that i i i don't even want to say i believe it'll help you i know it will help your business, and it's not something <clears throat> that you have to feel like I'm helping you. It's the organization and the model and this 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 service that we've we've built that I know it's what I needed to be successful, and I know that it will help you guys no matter what level you pick. But like I said, we will have a level for everybody, and it's something that at the end of the day you're going to be proud to be a part of, and. Um, a year from now, two years from now, you'll look back just like I'm looking back now and think that was the best decision I've ever made. That was the best money I spent investing in my business as opposed to all the other nickel and dime things that I'd tried in the past. So if you're interested, hit me up and uh, let's chat about it and we will do our best as the Technic organization to help you become more successful. Thank you guys for watching. I know this was a long one. If you got questions or comments, leave them down below and uh, good luck to you guys.